soon. And with that, I'm going to turn things over to Amy. Thank you very much, Daryl. I appreciate that. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, happy Monday afternoon to you uh, on in beautiful uh, October. Uh, I know that for many of you, um, uh, it would be absolutely in order for me to say Happy New Year uh, since we celebrated the start of a new fiscal year uh, at, on October the 1st, uh, both for the federal government as well as for Florida's local governments. Um, so uh, if you're enjoying that sort of a Happy New Year feeling, I've, I'm enjoying it right along with you. Uh, I do have a slide much later in my presentation uh, at which you'll see in a few moments but obviously as we uh, leave September uh, which was of course uh, library card sign up month which is a fabulous month and a month to definitely celebrate uh, we welcome October and American Archives month and so um, you know just from one wonderful uh, celebratory month to another but anyway very glad you're here with us today we'll go ahead and um, move forward to the next slide if you would please uh, Daryl I've got uh, Daryl's making my job really easy by by moving through in my slides um, and we'll go ahead and move thank you Daryl for that let's go ahead and look at this um, upcoming legislative sessions um, so and uh, as as we're getting started here I want to make sure that everybody um, feels very comfortable in either you know uh, raising your hand or putting questions in chat I do want to make sure that we're providing the information that is useful to you uh, and some of this information are um, things that we've talked about in the past and some are, some information is new but um, obviously if you have questions um, I want to do my best to, to answer those questions and if I can't answer them while we're together today then and, um, I'm definitely going to follow up with you and 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 get you a response um, as soon as I can. So we'll get started here thinking about legislative session. Um, we do have early legislative session in even years now um, in Florida. So 2022 brings us an early legislative session, as you can see there on my slide. Uh, the eh, something like in the middle of January through the middle of March uh, is that sort of standard 60-day session. Uh, for those of you who are sort of attuned to this and, and know about Florida's legislative sessions, one of the things we can always look forward to is six weeks of committee weeks, which is sort of the pre-legislative session work. Um, and that all started on September 20th. So we've uh, had a uh, committee weeks ongoing thus far uh, that like as I said committee weeks are six weeks um, starting uh, this this particular year on September 20th and ends on December 3rd so we're in the middle of committee weeks now that what that means is bills are being filed um, you know early work is being done um, on uh, legislation and you know anyway just uh, sort of uh, that sort of pre-legislative session uh, time frame and work that goes on in downtown Tallahassee so always going to keep you up to date on when uh, legislation legislative session is um, and especially now that Florida has a system where um, every other year the timing is a little different and so we're going to kind of always keep our eyes together on when the upcoming leg legislative session is. So with that, we'll go ahead and, and move forward and talk about um, some upcoming uh, and, and real recent council and board meetings that we've had. Um, we do have a citizen support organization, which is uh, also known as the Friends of the State Library, and uh, sorry, Friends of the State Library and Archives of Florida, Inc. That is our citizen support organization. They provide support for the division activities and facilitates awareness of the division. We actually have a CSO meeting next week. Uh, that is a publicly noticed meeting. So if you're curious about uh, what the, um, what the Friends of the State Library and Archives of Florida, uh, what what the what work they uh, uh, what work they complete and and perform on behalf of the division, uh, we would invite you to come join us. That was Monday afternoon, Monday uh, the eleventh in the afternoon, and the morning of the twelfth. You can find that um, meeting information on our webpage. 
Also of note uh, from the this sort of still in this same sort of um, vein, uh, the State Library Council, which provides advice and assistance related to federal funding for projects, met in late September, so just last week, um, for ARPA funding recommendations. And there actually will be one more um, State Library Council meeting uh, probably in mid to late November. So um, we do have another State Library Council meeting upcoming. Uh, that meeting is not yet noticed because we haven't yet decided on the final date for that particular meeting. So stay tuned on, on the next State Library Council meeting. Uh, it will be a one day meeting and it will be dealing with the um, American Rescue Plan Act funding uh, that uh, was received by the division. So I guess a, a quick uh, update, uh, I, I should have probably maybe started with that. I don't have a different slide, so we'll talk about it here. Um, for With the ARPA funds, which we have talked about in previous division updates, uh, the division received $6.7 million. Uh, we did uh, get 63 applications um, and uh, as of the 28th, we, uh, the State Library Council recommended 52 of those applications to be funded. Um, and so this meeting that I was just telling you about that will happen in November will be for the State Library Council to come back and, and review uh, the 11 applications that were not funded. And there is a little, a hair over $77,000 um, that needs to be uh, still uh, recommended for funding. So there you have it. Those are some things going on with our uh, councils and boards, our uh, citizen support organization, as well as the State Library Council. So let's move forward and um, sort of think about the budget cycle. Um, most of you who have attended uh, this particular meeting in the past are well, uh, have probably seen this circle of the budget life. Uh, you know, several, several times. Um, I always like to, to bring it up. Uh, what you'll see is that um, if you're looking at the circle sort of in thinking of it as I do in terms of sort of a, a clock on the wall, um, we have just passed six o'clock. Um, at the end of September, the department uh, submitted our long range program plan. Sorry, that's hard to say, long range program plan. So that was submitted at the end of September. And that was, as you can see immediately to the right there, the middle of September, uh, the Department of State submitted our legislative budget request. And we're gonna talk some more about that. I actually have a slide about the, um, about the legislative budget request in a few moments. So if we're sort of still down there, if you will, and we kind of move around to that sort of seven o'clock uh, time frame, if you will, there in the circle. Um, what you can see is that we're sort of, we're past the point of the Department of State submitting budget requests, but we are well ahead of when we anticipate seeing the governor's budget be released. The governor's budget has to be released at least 30 days before session begins. And you may recall from that previous uh, slide that se session begins on January 11th. And so I, we're going to anticipate seeing uh, the governor releasing the governor's budget sometime in early December. Um, so that will sort of be the next big sort of event, if you will, uh, in our budget cycle. So um, always thinking about that and the, and the budget cycle and sort of where we are um, right now, like, um, you know, like many of you and, and in your uh, worlds as well, you sort of are working in, you know, two or three different <laughs> uh, budget years at any given time, sort of finishing up a year, beginning a year and planning a year, right? So um, this obviously is looking uh, very much uh, and thinking about uh, that what would will be the budget for uh, for year 22, 23, this particular budget cycle um, graphic, but obviously we're all uh, working in, on several different years at any given time. So let's look at um, some more about the budget, think some more about the budget. Um, in the next slide that we have, one of the things that I'm representing is um, 
what is if you look at the far right hand column and i realize it's all in italics because things are still being formulated but what i've represented in that column is the department of state's legislative budget request and these are for our major programs and our major programs that um, impact um, all of you all um, and so I did want to sort of bring uh, this uh, up and bring it to light so that you would um, be aware of the budget request as put forward by the Department of State. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, each of these lines. Um, the library cooperative grant funding, those are that's the funding that's for our multi-type library cooperative partners, the state funds. Uh, that is of $2 million. That is the recurring amount, the amount that is allowed in Florida law. And so that is the amount that is um, in the, in the uh, budget request at this time. Uh, in the Library Services and Technology Act, or the LSTA line there in my uh, uh, chart that you have uh, before you on the slide, um, you'll see that our budget request is $2.68 million. Where that is because we have asked for an additional $533,286 um, in authority. Um, and so let's sort of I want to talk about that a little bit the what we're asking for is permission that 2.68 million dollars is permission to spend money that comes from the from the Institute of Museum and Library Services or IMLS and so what we have done is we've asked for that additional five hundred and thirty three thousand dollars because our award from the federal government has been in the last several years more than what the legislature has um, appropriated in authority. So what, what that particular line in showing the $2.68 million, our legislative budget request is to bump that amount of authority or permission um, up to be more in line with our federal um, award. So that's where you see the $2.68 million. Um, I don't anticipate any um, uh, federal recovery dollars um, for 22, 23. Of course, we've had a wonderful amount in the $1.9 million in CARES in 2020, 2021, $6.7 million in 2021, 22 in our ARPA funding, as we we're talking about a few minutes ago. Um, I'm not anticipating any um, federal recovery dollars uh, in this next 22, 23 year. Obviously, if funds become available, um, the, I will work with the Secretary of State's office and we'll, uh, you know, obviously do the, what we need to do, but at this point we don't anticipate that. So you'll see that as an NA or not applicable. The state aid to libraries budget request for 22-23 is at the $17.3 million. That is the recurring level of state aid to libraries. Um, and public library construction, uh, the Department of State's legislative budget request, um, it, it, actually, to be fairer, the budget request is not zero. Um, that's, that's my error on this slide. The Department of State does not include construction funding in our budget request. So it's not that we're requesting zero. I, I'm sorry, that's, that's my fault for, for what's on the slide. It's that, that the um, construction projects are never part of the legislative budget request. As a, as a point of just, um, I guess, interest maybe, um, that all of the Department of State's fixed capital outlay projects, because three divisions have construction projects for fixed capital projects, and those are all submitted to the legislature in what we call a grants booklet, and they all go up together uh, for consideration by the legislature. So um, certainly, uh, I, I certainly uh, hope uh, that construction projects will be funded, but the Department of State actually does not request uh, those funds as part of our legislative budget request. So we'll move forward and think a little bit more about the budget. 
one of the things that I'm sort of drawing to your attention today, um, especially because we've just passed the end of September and you saw there in my budget cycle graphic, um, the, uh, the long range program plan, as well as the legislative budget request. Um, I wanted to make sure that you were aware that this particular website, which is called Florida's Fiscal Portal, and you have the URL there, that is one of the ways that you can see um, all the documentation published about um, any state agency and uh, where their particular budget requests are. You can go back historically, look back in time, or you can look, of course, at the most recent budget uh, documents that have been um, officially filed uh, with and within the Florida Fiscal Portal. You can pull up all kinds of information. So um, there uh, is, there's, that I wanted you to see sort of where that officially is found. Um, I also wanted to bring up while we were here on this slide, two other um, items that you're gonna see in our legislative budget request. If you should, I don't know, some night not be able to sleep and need to you know, peruse budget documents so that hopefully, you know, you would fall to sleep um, and stay sound asleep um, and very quickly um, having, uh, started reading these documents. Um, but anyway, so sh should you start looking for that, uh, you would see two other things besides the past, the, the most previous slide, I sh was talking to you about our, our major grant programs and sort of showing you what our requests were based on those um, programs. There are two other things that are included in the Department of State's um, legislative budget request for um, fiscal year 2022-2023. And I wanted to mention both of those while we're here on this slide um, in case you get to reading and, you, and you're interested. Uh, one of the requests that we have in is to uh, do a what we call a fund shift. Um, what I'm requesting is that two positions move from the records management trust fund budget category to the general revenue budget category. So that's one of the legislative budget requests that I have, um, that the division has um, in consideration uh, right now. And then um, a second request that you would see if you um, were perusing the Florida Fiscal Portal is a request by the Division of Library Information Services um, for an additional $2.5 million to transition the floridarules.org website into a modern cloud hosted system that would better support the OS procedures and user, uh, user interaction. We're gonna talk some more about floridarules.org in a few moments. And if, you've, if you're a veteran attending uh, the, um, these division updates, you hear me talk about uh, floridarules.org every time we're together uh, because it is a way that you can um, keep an eye on uh, any rules that are, are, are being modified um, and, and, and be able to be part of that process. So we'll, we'll look at that in a, in a few moments when we get to that part. But um, you, if you looked at our uh, legislative budget request, you would see that $2.5 million uh, request uh, to transition this particular web. Uh, site. So those are just two other things that are um, in our legislative budget request. So we're going to look now at, um, well, I'm still thinking about 2022-2023, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody, I guess at this point, is aware that um, we will have 31 grant applications for public library construction grant applications that are for consideration by the um, legislature. Uh, for funding in the 2022-2023 year. Um, these 31 applications are requesting $14.6 million. Um, if you're interested, you can see the full list of these public library construction applications on our webpage. So if that's something that's of interest to you, you certainly can uh, uh, look at that particular list um, on our webpage of those 31 applications that we hope will be uh, funded uh, during the next legislative session. So if we look at the next several slides, um, one of the things that I always want to do when we're together is sort of to look at uh, budget years side by side. Um, when we last met, uh, these uh, these slides were were put together at that time um, in in uh, because at that point we knew what the 2021-2022 uh, budget year was going to 
look like and how it was going to what it was uh, you know what our projected budget were and so there are no changes on these slides but i just feel like it's always a good thing for us to look at and uh to, when we're together there are three different budget categories that the division of library information services uh has sort of within its purview our general revenue dollars um, our federal grants trust fund dollars, which is where the LSTA uh, funds are. And then you can see also there uh, the, uh, the, the ARPA funds and the CARES Act funds. Or if you look across in time, why we've had such a um, market increase. The, um, the LSTA, the Library Services and Technology Act funds, have remained pretty steady at about $9 million, hovering right at $9 million. And so the, the increase in 2020, 2021 is that infusion of the $1.9 million in CARES Act funds. And then in 21, 22, of course, with the infusion of the $6.7 million um, of the ARPA fund. So that that's you know, why you've got that sort of change in the Federal Grants Trust Fund um, line. The last ca budget category that we have um, there um, is from the Records Management Trust Fund. And um, that is a trust fund where we charge fees and then turn around and use those fees in order to uh, pay staff and to continue to carry out programs. And I can see that there is a question in the, um, in the chat, and Julie, it's uh, uh, we're, uh, that's not the next slide, but I, it's not too many slides down the line. So I promise we're going to get the answer to your question there um, in just in just a second. Unfortunately, it's uh, uh, I'm going to show you what it's been in the recent past, and um, it's uh, uh, a little bit on the um, uh, what's it. Uh, um, um, well, sad. I'll say sad. But anyway, we'll get to that in just a minute. So it's a great question, almost as though I was um, asking you to, to to make sure that I was moving along here. So we'll keep we'll keep going. Let's look um, at overall five year funding history. This is just looking at um, the uh, the overall funding for the division across any of those three budget categories we were just looking at. Just another way to um, to look at the overall sort of budget health or prognosis for the Division of Library Information Services. If we move on to the um, next slide, we'll look at um, the state aid to libraries funding over the last um, five years. And again, just kind of looking at, at this sort of uh, sort of as a side by side um, over, uh, over a five year period and thinking about how much has been appropriated in this case for that one particular program, State Aid to Libraries, which is a program for, for public libraries. If we move on to the next slide, we see the, um, our library cooperative grant funding. This is again, the general revenue dollars that are provided uh, to our multi-type library cooperative partners. Um, and this is the five year funding history for that particular grant program. And if we get to that next slide, we'll get to, we'll answer Julie's question, which again is um, really uh, this, well, maybe the saddest slide I've got. Uh, but anyway, this, this is the five year funding history of public library construction grants. Um, we've had a million dollars um, and the last funding was in 1920. Uh, for two projects. Uh, just a little bit of information for those of you who are not as aware, uh, the maximum grant award in our public library construction program is a half million dollars. That's the maximum amount that can be requested. And so in 1922, uh, projects were funded. Um, so not, not really, um, mm, well, I'm always, I'm thankful for, for any dollars. I, I, I will say that, but um, yeah, and, and, and Julie is saying at, uh, that, uh, and I'm going to just read Julie's comment here. I think we need to do a better job of advocating for construction dollars, even if we don't have a project in the hopper. It makes a big difference. And Julie, I certainly would definitely um, agree with you. And I know that the organizations that have applications in, again, a couple of slides ago, we were talking about the 31 applications, which will be considered by the uh, legislature for funding in 22, 23. I know they would appreciate um, any support that you can lend when you're talking to your um, state elected officials. Um, I will say, and as a huge thank you, 
um, to the Florida Library Association uh, for continuing to include public library construction um, and full funding for public library construction on their um, advocacy uh, platform and uh, their legislative platform, and that is greatly appreciated. The, the Florida Library Association has been very, very supportive of, of of um, providing support for all of the division's grant programs and for all um, of our state's uh, programs, including those for the publicly funded colleges and universities as well. So, Julie, well said. Um, you know, if the many voices make a huge impact, um, and and absolutely agreed, uh, and on construction as well as other programs. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to look at um, one more slide with some budget numbers here, and then I promise we'll talk about some other things. This, um, the, sometimes uh, money can, uh, well, anyway, uh, necessary to talk about. I kind of get it um, here early in our t with our time together. But um, so looking at our five-year history, history, funding history of the LSTA, again, those federal dollars, and I think you can see pretty clearly there on the slide the um, the infusion of those additional dollars, those additional recovery dollars in 2020, 2021, as well as 2021 and 2022. Um, so uh, it's really has been wonderful that those uh, dollars have been awarded throughout the country. And we've been very fortunate here in Florida to take those recovery dollars, both in the CARES Act and in the ARPA Act funds, and turn them around into uh, competitive grant applications. So um, that's that's sort of been what the, the, how the division has moved through with these particular dollars. So. Um, Folks, I'm going to kind of leave budget behind, but know that we can come back to budget at any point or, you know, I invite any of you to um, contact me at, you know, at whatever time is convenient for you. Uh, if right now sort of in this kind of setting is not when you want to ask some budget questions, happy, happy, happy to have uh, 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 conversations with you. Uh, so there is another question. Has the 2022 Library Day been scheduled yet? I will tell you, I know that um, that's being worked on by the Advocacy Committee, and I don't know if there's, um, I don't, it's not been announced yet that I'm aware of, and so I don't know if the date is finalized. Uh, if we do have somebody on uh, with us today who has knowledge of a finalized date, um, I would invite you to to share that with the group if you can. Um, if not, stay tuned, because I know that 2022 Library Day has been um, good, good, good. Thank you, Phyllis. Uh, so still finalizing that. All right, perfect. I know it's coming, so stay tuned. That's That was a great question, Brad. We're gonna stay, all stay tuned so that we can be engaged, um, sort of back to Julie's point and um, all, uh, working together in support of, of, of library programs and library support. So thank you all for that. So again, we're going to move away from funding a little bit, although yeah, funding's the bedrock of everything. But let's talk about some other things. Let's talk about some other things. So the Florida Book Awards. Um, I do want to bring to your attention uh, that the Florida Book Awards has just announced the 2021 competition for the um, best Florida literature, including a new award called the Gerald Inslee Award for Developing Writers. So I hope that you're well aware of the Florida Book Awards. Uh, this um, this particular um, honor is uh, is coordinated and uh, managed by Florida State University. Um, and they did just, I'm going to, like in the last week, I think it was, um, announced the uh, and, and put forward a call for uh, submission. So what they're looking for right now is um, the, the deadline is January 13th, 2022. And what they're looking for is um, uh, applications from uh, any books that were published in the 2021 year. So, sure hope that if you're, if you know authors, if you, you know, know of, of books that should be um, submitted as for the Florida Book Awards and for consideration, I sure hope that you will encourage that. This is a, a fabulous uh, program, um, and and yes, uh, Gloria Colvin is back and 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 um, and 
uh, coordinating the Florida Book Awards. Very exciting, both for the Florida Book Awards and and um, and uh, for all of us who were our, our, our great, glorious supporters and 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 glorious ties to FLA, of course. And um, anyway, it's it's, it's wonderful uh, to to. Uh, to have the information about the 2021 competition for the Florida Book Awards. So please make sure to um, submit uh, uh, or to encourage authors to submit their books. Um, just one more uh, quick note about that, that winners will be announced in the first week of March 2022. So um, this will, you know, we're have that entry deadline of January 13th, 2022, and then we'll turn around after all the um all the many, many jurors have finished their reading of all these wonderful uh, books um, and have some an, uh, winners announced in March. So really a wonderful program. And, and just um, sort of uh, just so in case you all aren't aware, the Florida Book Awards is one of the oldest state book awards um, in the country. Um, so we really have a very fine uh, state uh, book awards um, uh, uh, competition um, and it is um, a, a model that many other states uh, look to and are envious of because of, of our history with this program and the division is very uh, pleased uh, as, as is the D Department of State to partner with the Florida Book Awards it's such a such an incredible program um, and, and uh, celebrating more wonderful things about Florida so moving forward and thinking about other Great stuff that's going on. Um, I'd like to get to you know, celebrate all these things. Um, I've been talking to you about um, the seven hundred thousand dollars that's in the uh, was in the state budget for the current fiscal year for 2021-2022. Uh, we do have a um, a, a contract with Career Online High School or uh, Smart Horizons Career Online Education. Um, and we do ha currently have 30 participating libraries. So if your library, if your public library is participating, we're so glad to have you um, working um, on this with us. If you're a public library that is not participating, but maybe this sounds interesting to you, I certainly would invite you to get in touch with me. It is not too late if you'd like to offer this program um, at your public library and this is what this program just very quickly is a program that's designed for adults 19 and older who did not complete their high school education and who would like to get a high school diploma a private high school diploma um, at 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 no cost and and that cost is borne by the state of florida and by public libraries and their support of of, of recruiting students um, so the, the scholarships are paid for uh, through state general revenue. So anyway, very exciting to have that program, but about, I'm going to say maybe a month since we've had a contract in place. So I'm really ramping up with Grail Line High School. So uh, that's uh, great and good news to share. A uh, great thank you. Um, Craig, yes, uh, says, please take advantage of Career Online High School. It is very little work for the amazing outcomes. And that's uh, speaking from a, a public library director there. So um, I'm always glad to have other people chime in. I feel like it's easy for me to say, oh, sure, come on, you want to do this. Um, it's much better to hear um, from from library directors who uh, are uh, who who are you know if you will in the trenches working on this program and yes Emily there are remaining unallocated scholarships yes um, I am taking care of, of of parsing those scholarships out to participating libraries and there are uh, plenty of scholarships left at this time. So if we move on forward, I'm keeping an eye on the time as well, but happy to have the questions and comments coming in. It's great. Um, we do have some upcoming grant deadlines. I'm sitting here on October the 4th. Um, most, many of you in public libraries will know that we had a major deadline last Friday. Our state aid to libraries application uh, was due on October the 1st. And um, so that's wonderful. We've, you know, made it through that. And again, said Happy New Year uh, when that's appropriate. Uh, but with the state aid applications, we do have a December 1 deadline for some additional documentation. So that deadline is coming up. And then, of course, we'll roll into um, the federal uh, uh, application for Library Services and Technology Act applications early in 2022. So that would be sort of the next uh, grant deadline would be uh, in, 
you traditionally in the middle of March 2022 for the Library Services and Technology Act funds, those federal funds. So I always like to remind you about upcoming grant deadlines. Let's move forward to our next slide. Thank you so much, Daryl, for helping me out with this. And all I got to do is talk. Daryl does the hard work. So I, I do appreciate Daryl's support. Um, so thinking about our statewide resource sharing, goodness, more great news to share. And um, uh, you know, I also am interested in, in hearing from you either now in the chat or later through email or phone call um, about how things are going. First thing I want to talk about and, and remind you is that we do have um, a year old now, had a birthday back in um, August as a one-year-old program, our Flynn Share It. This is our resource sharing platform. Um, that the division supports and any library that would like to participate in resource sharing through Flynn Share It is more than welcome to participate. Um, I can certainly put you in touch with uh, folks who can give you all the particulars about the Flynn Share It program. Um, this is an, uh, a way for you to, um, if you're interested in your library, in order to uh, provide resource sharing um, ac across libraries, either mediated or unmediated. Um, so again, just, just a little over a year old. Um, obviously, um, the, the more libraries we have participating in Flynn Share It, the more um, robust the you know, overall offerings are across the state. So we look forward to the Flynn Share It program continuing continuing to grow, and that's that's really exciting. So one of the newest things that happened just in the last couple of weeks um, with our statewide resource sharing support is the change from uh, in our, in our uh, courier vendor. Um, and I believe probably most of you are aware, this is probably not um, uh, uh, divulging anything you're not already uh, have had uh, divulged to you, is that the courier system has moved to UPS. And we are now using as a state the UPS as our courier for our beloved orange bags or our dilly bags. Um, we, I am sure that with this change um, to UPS, that we are all already experienced improved service um, as well as um, increased knowledge of the of where our items are and and um, faster uh, delivery. I've, I have ha had a couple of folks reach out to me to talk about uh, that the the time difference in the previous courier and the current courier. I, I am thankful to all of you all for being patient um, and understanding as we move through this major um, a system change or, or, or vendor change from our former courier to our new courier in UPS. Um, th there is a uh, Nothing about change that is uh, easy or maybe even sometimes predictable, um, but I think that that we have and mostly have gotten you know uh, through that process where we were sort of bridging between the two careers um, now solidly into service with our new career in UPS. Um, so thank you all for working with us on that. I am sure that you have had lots of questions um, and, and, and have had um, several bumps. Yes, thank you for that, Peggy. Yes, there have been some bumps that are still getting worked out. Um, but thank you for, for working with us on this um, and, and being our partners in this. Uh, Kathy Maloney, who's a division staff member and the staff at the Tampa Bay Library Consortium, we've been having um, uh, open office hours. And, um, you know, if that is helpful to you, I hope that you will let us know so that we can continue to offer that sort of support. Um, hang on just a second. I need to get a, a, a drink of water. Give me one second. Thank you. Sorry about that. So um, it, we've had open office hours. The Tampa Bay Library Consortium has wonderful FAQs on their webpage. 
um, and they have very responsive um, email. Uh, so if you have any questions or concerns, please, please reach out. And Peggy, thank you for that um, great shout out to Kathy and Kira. They have been working nonstop on this uh, transition as well as you know providing uh, F and updating FAQs and and um, and and supplies and all sorts of things. So um, <laughs> great. I'm glad we've been patient all around. So that that is wonderful. And, and nothing like a change in vendors from a major system them to uh, give us all a little bit of a lesson in um, in, in in patience but thank you all uh, we we really are excited uh, we've been uh, the division of library information support services has been supporting the courier service for 24 years this is the first major change in 24 years and this was a major change I guess it's it's probably better that we waited 24 right you know we don't want you don't want to have major change all the time um, but anyway we, we are really uh, pleased uh, with with what's happening. Let me talk just a, for a minute about this. What we've done is we've leveraged the state contract um, so that the, the state of Florida through the, de, um, the Department of Management Services has a state term contract with UPS. So what we're able to do with this is to offer state contract rates and that is what is um, being paid that's the rates that are being paid uh, with the cost share that uh, you all are have been uh, a part of for so many years. Um, so that's another bit of change related to the courier services is moving from one model, which was based on you know delivery and how many days a week to a true package model. So again, lots of patience all around, lots of uh, thanks to everyone, but most especially to the um, to our fine friends and partners at the Tampa Bay Library Consortium for the work they've done in helping to move the courier system um, over to our new vendor. So again, happy to hear some more about that or answer questions, but we'll keep moving forward on because we've got some other things to talk about. Um, so I do hope that um, you all have seen emails from me uh, related to some uh, books to share. Um, it's just a good fortune on um, my end or are the divisions end to have had two titles um, become available. And um, uh, I know uh, I know a couple of folks who have a you know have good ideas about what to do with uh, books. So uh, it's always fun to be able to have books to share. Um, there are uh, available order well, sorry order blanks uh, tongue tied there um, related to both of these titles. So if if you have not had an opportunity to request copies of Counting the Days by Janine Mason or Florida's Fabled Ends by Louise Frisbee. And I shouldn't say just or it could be and you could have requested both titles. Um, they they are there are order blanks that you can um, use to to request those uh, copies of those titles. Um, we have already distributed some uh, counting the days books. We have not yet started uh, distributing the Florida's fabled in title. So what we do is we collect orders. Um, and, and uh, sort of get all the orders together and then we're shipping off sort of a, a, a batch, if you will, of, of, of orders. So those are our books to share. We're gonna talk next about the um, public library directors meeting. Um, and so uh, for those of you who are um, at, in public libraries and, and thank you, Kathy Maloney's putting out there in the chat. Thank you, the, um, the order the links for the order form for those two books. So thank you, thank you for doing that, Kathy. So for public library directors, um, we are having a, a public library directors meeting in December on December 7th and 8th. Um, it will be both a virtual meeting as well as a um, as as a in as a face to face meeting. That's December 7th and 8th. Uh, and so uh, here in Tallahassee at the beautiful Turnbull Center on FSU's campus, that's the building you see in the image to the left there. Um, the two keynote speakers that I have lined up are Deetta Jones, who will be speaking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, the beautiful face you see there smiling at you. Deetta Jones, for many of you, may very well have remember uh, previous presentations and interactions that we've had with Deetta. She was um, instrumental in our uh, our silly program for years, and and we've certainly she's been a a presenter um, over the years uh, for in Florida. So. We're, 
really thrilled to have Dieta. Um, he's going to be here uh, for the director's meeting and also Marty Miner from Library Law Consulting. Uh, so those of you who are public library directors, I sent an email a couple of weeks ago asking for you to um, help us develop Marty Miner's um, presentation. Uh, she is a library lawyer in Georgia and what she's going to do is um, pull together all your legal questions and then research that in Florida law and give us some guidance. Of course, that does, you're going to hear this said a couple of times, that does not um, uh, 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 take away from the importance of your the, the lawyer that you have uh, in your county or cooperative or, you know, your legal counsel, your local legal counsel. But um, she has been a great presenter in the past, Marty Miner, and provided some really great information. Um, so really excited that Marty, Ma, sorry, Marty Miner from Library Law Consulting will be with us uh, at our director's meeting uh, December 7th and 8th. Again, there'll be an opportunity uh, to, uh, to attend virtually or, uh, or in person. So a couple of other updates, and these will go a little faster unless there's um, other questions. Uh, so just, just continuing to let you know that the division is um, working on finalizing some procurement uh, for our statewide digital platform. Uh, this will allow libraries, museums, archives, and other cultural institutions uh, to have a place to uh, uh, Amy's words, park uh, and retrieve digital items if that's something that is uh, uh, something that you where you don't have a platform currently or you need a new platform. So that is our um, that is what we are designing. We are in the middle of procurement um, and uh, it will be actually a couple of more months before we're actually um, uh, uh, yes, uh, hosting our first sets of content, but know that there's more information coming soon related to Florida's statewide digital platform. Really excited about uh, work that's being done there and going to be really excited to share that with you all um, at, at a division update in the future. Looking at the next screen um, and also watching the time, so I got to talk a little faster. Um, just making sure that you all are, are aware, if you haven't heard me talk about it already, that we are in the midst of a um, an active study right now with our friends at the University of Florida, specifically at the Bureau of Economic and Business Research, um, doing a public library economic impact study. Um, and uh, uh, they are in the midst of this particular study. It also includes a major events uh, study as well as the economic impact. Um, the, we will have a presentation on this study at the uh, director's um, meeting as well. So you'll be able to find out the um, and hear from the researchers themselves. Uh, in that at the December meeting, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, thanks, uh, Julie. Yes, we're really excited about the statewide digital platform. So good, good, good. I'm glad that sounds interesting. Always what you know. Always good to have uh, to offer things that sound interesting and that you want to learn more. So, um, if we go into the next slide, it, this is you know my my reminder, and we already sort of talked about this American Archives Month. So since it's October, I'm just, uh, glad to say um, Happy American Archives Month. Of course, um, I know you may be in, in, you know in your collections uh, also celebrating American Archives Month along with the division, and and that that's very wonderful. Wonderful. So moving on and thinking about archives, but thinking specifically about Florida Memory and that digital outreach arm of the State Library and Archives of Florida, it is time to order your 2022 Florida Memory calendars. And especially, especially, especially if you are interested in uh, uh, distributing calendars from your library, we need you to go to floridamemory.com and order um, calendars as an organization so that we can send um, calendars uh, to your library so that you can, uh, so that you can, I'm trying to type floridamemory.com into the uh, uh, chat there and talk at the same time. Don't do it very well, folks. Sorry about that. But floridamemory.com, Right there on that front page, you're going to see the um, the link about the Florida Memory Calendars. Great question, Lisa. There is no cost. 
uh, we will we have already developed the calendar we have printed the calendars the calendars are in this building and we want to send a box or two of calendars uh, to you Lisa and to everybody else on, uh, on right now um, so that you can distribute calendars um, of, uh, you know, at, at your library if you would like to. And so if you'll just go to that floridamemory.com uh, uh, webpage and you'll be able to put in your information as an organization and be able to get uh, order calendars to be able to distribute. These are 2022 calendars. Um, it, many of you will sadly remember that our 2021 calendars uh, we didn't, uh, weren't able to produce, but we are, we have the, um, oh great, thank you there Beth for that. There's the their link to the Duke Google Doc um, to be able to order your Florida Memory uh, calendars as an organization. Um, it is my understanding, folks, one of the reasons I'm hitting hard here the, with the language about organization is that uh, we um, have maxed out on the calendars that we can send to individuals. Um, so at this point, what we're accepting is those, um, regardless of what the order blank says, what we're really accepting and pushing right now is for you to order as organizations so that you can distribute calendars uh, from uh, your organization to the folks that walk through the door. So we look forward to seeing those orders uh, from you all come in. Just a couple of other reminders here. Next slide, where as we're sort of rounding up and winding up uh, our time together, our table of contents service. I always want to remind you uh, of our table of content service. Um, you can go to the link you see there on your screen um, and you can pick which titles are of interest to you. What we're highlighting here on the on the screen, of course, is well, well it makes sense. Uh, uh, the, our, our, our librarianship titles or our, um, titles that are of most interest to us as a profession. So if you are interested in getting the title, con sorry, the table of contents um, delivered Delivered to you via email. You fill out the um, the form there that you find at the Bitly link, and then we would uh, send you a table of contents every time for any one of the journals you pick, and then you can tell us which articles you would like to receive. So we would love for you to participate in our table of contents service if you are interested. Also, next slide. Want to remind you about our professional resources. Um, we do have a number of resources that were are, are purchased specifically for uh, folks who work in libraries. And any staff member of a public library, public school, or public academic library can get a state library card. And that way you can ac access the library literature database and our collection of professional ebooks. So we hope that you're um, using um, and making use of your state library card as well as there are professional resources. Also, next slide, want to remind you about um, our professional ebook collection. Um, so, we do have a, a number of ebooks. Again, uh, what we're showing you here, we have lots of ebooks, as many of you all do as well. Um, our ebooks, um, of course, the ones we're highlighting here are specific to the library profession, and um, we have quite a a, a large number, so we would uh, be happy for you to get that state library card and use these. Of course, we also have a large collection of print titles um, from the um, from librarianship, and we'd be more than happy to uh, interlibrary loan those titles to you. Um, be, that, of course, we would be more than happy to do that. Next slide, we want to remind you about all your continuing education opportunities. Um, there are just there are lots and lots of them. Um, our, we do have on October the 18th, our next DLIS discussion is sponsored by the Bureau of Library Development. We held at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and the topic will be social workers and libraries. So that's the next DLIS discussion, October 18th, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, so that's just one example of an upcoming CE event that you have lots of great uh, opportunities for continuing education through a lot of wonderful uh, resources at your fingertips and I've listed a few here on the on the slide just to remind you of all the great places you can get your CE. Moving on to the next slide and talking even a little faster still um, is that uh, that um, is related to the current rule revisions that the uh, division is undergoing. Um, I was talking to you a, a little while ago about FloridaRules.org, and if you are interested in any of these rules or any any rule, um, you can go to uh, flrules.org and follow up so that you get um, 
reminders when any rulemaking is, is going on. The two with asterisks at the top are both our library grant programs as well as our records retention scheduling and disposition for the GS3 election records. They have an asterisk because if you go to FloridaRules.org right now, you will not see that we're in rulemaking with those two quite yet. They are um, in the process and will be started very, very soon. So I wanted to go ahead and mention those to you uh, now um, that they are, we are starting the rulemaking process. So we uh, in the division are always doing rulemaking. And just a quick reminder, um, rulemaking is how agencies like the Department of State carry out state law. So um, this is what we have to do in order to uh, enact state law and carry it forward. Um, so, and I do see that I have a question here. Uh, uh, Julie's asking, did I say when libraries would be notified as to if ARPA funds were awarded or not? I didn't say, Julie, that's a great question. Um, I, and I can contact you after the, um, specifically Julie, you or anybody else that's interested uh, after this particular um, meeting. Uh, we, staff is working on the, the funding recommendations that were developed on September 28th. The next step is that the funding recommendations will go to the Secretary of State for her approval. Um, and after uh, the Secretary provides her approval, that is when we would officially be sending letters and other kinds of, of information out and would, would uh, make a list for our web page and those sorts of things. So there's, since they're still um, in process right now, uh, if anyone is interested, uh, probably best to just um, uh, send me an email or call me so that um, so that I can provide the answer to that. Um, uh, uh, but it'll be a couple more weeks before we have anything up on our web page or have any official uh, language out as far as uh, contacts um, with with next steps because of needing the secretary's approval on those recommendations. We're really at the almost at the last uh, slide here. The next slide is just a reminder of all the different ways that we have to stay in touch with you um, with our social media platforms. And, and um, we have great newsletters that we hope you're tapping into and making use of. Um, one next slide here. Um, the next division update will be held on January 10th of 2022. That'll be all, all the way into next year. And gosh, I don't know if you noticed, folks, but this is one day before before session starts. Uh, so we'll be together on January 10th and I guess everybody will be traveling to Tallahassee that day because session will start that very next day. But anyway, it'll be great to talk about sort of what's happened during committee weeks and as we gear up for the start of legislative session. So that is the uh, date for our next update. And at 2.57, so with three minutes to spare, the next slide has a big question mark. Um, and so that is supposed to be my um, uh, my cue to sort of take another sip of water and see if anybody uh, has any questions. And they also gave me a chance to take a sip of water. So <laughs> um, I know we've had some questions along and along, so um, there might not be any other questions and, and many folks might have a three o'clock meeting that they need to sort of uh, jump off of this meeting to get ready for their next meeting. Um, so there is a question, um, how to sign up for the 1018 discussion. Uh, oh, the DLIS discussion, thank you for that. Um, all right, so Melissa, I'm gonna send you a, um, I, it's on our webpage, Melissa, but I'm making a note and I it will send you an email after this. Um, uh, gets, the registration link is on our webpage, but it will, but I will send it to you. So, oh, and if I forget, please uh, email, email me, Melissa. Um, so I will get that to you. Yes, you're welcome for the update. I, I hope that the information is useful. Um, would love to get your feedback on what else you'd like to learn about with the division. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do talk really quickly, especially if I've had a little chocolate, which I have had. Um, so sorry about that. I, I, I don't, I don't take offense when people say, "Would you please slow down." because you're talking really fast so so I, uh, I would welcome folks saying that if, if especially if I if I need to slow down uh, but so glad that you all are here thank you so much for being here we're we are at 259 um, so we really are in, 
out of time and out of slides. Um, so <laughs> that, uh, that great. Thank you, Renee. Well, it, I did fly through the last pieces there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, yes, that's true. Maybe. Oh, thank you, Casey, for putting there. If Melissa, if you're still on, thank you, Casey. The um, DLIS discussion link is there. So that is um, that's great. But and if in case Melissa is not still on, I will still send that email but thank you Casey for doing that I I don't uh, type into chat and talk and and think all at the same time for sure so anyway thank you all so much for being here we're at three o'clock we'll go ahead and close off the recording and go ahead and um, call this division update um, complete but thank you all for being here so glad to spend an hour with you and to tell you about the wonderful things going on uh, going on at the division take care everybody thank you